Okay, hi there everyone. So I'm going to be talking about Svelte with Chart.js. Um, so to start, I'm going to use Deadjit here, which you can install uh, once you have it. If you install it globally, you can do Deadjit Svelte.js slash template. And I'm going to call this Chart Svelte. Okay, so now I change directory into Actually, I wanted to do this in my documents. So I'm going to move it to documents, chain, and then change directory into it. Uh, and then I'm going to need to install. And while it's installing, I will code, oops, didn't want to do that, code dot, which will open the project in Visual Studio Code. Bring that over here. OK, all done installing, and then npm run dev okay so here's my project I'm gonna add a component called chart.svelte and then from my app I'm gonna import the chart chart from chart.svelte and I'll put it right here And I'm not sure, I don't think we need any style. Okay, so to make our chart, we're going to first need to have it available to us. So I'm going to copy script tag with SRI so that it's secure. And then I'm going to paste it into here. Okay, so most people would probably npm install chart.js or something. But that's how I like to do it. Okay, so... Um, and for production, I would download it first or something, but, um, okay, anyway, so I'm going to put this, in, I'm going to save this here, and I'm going to put, I'm just going to copy and paste that all into there, because it's the example. So, I got my canvas, and this is going to put that chart on the canvas, so let's go and see if it works. <gasps> Uh-oh, it does not work. Okay. And this is the error. I don't know why that's the error, but I know that we need to import on mount from Svelte. Okay, so the reason we need to do that is because um, what is because this doesn't exist yet when this runs. So we have to wait for it to mount this onto the screen, and then this can run because this needs access to this um, in order to run. So. First, I'm going to make this a function. Function um, create chart. Okay, and then I'm going to put this all inside there. And I wish it would format it for me. There we go. So now we can rerun it whenever it updates. So now I'm going to come down here and on mount, it's going to create the graph, create the chart, sorry. Okay, let's see if that works. Okay, there is our chart. So, um, what it does is expand as far as it can in width, and then it will draw itself. It will make the height bigger and bigger and bigger so that it stays proportional. So, what you're going to want to do is change these proportions. You can just do height 1, and then whatever you want the width to be, to how much bigger you want it than height as a like as a proportion, as a ratio. I'll do it as two. So it fills the screen like that. But it would get very tiny if you boop, go like that. So you, you'll you have to play around with that if you want to do something different with the sizing. OK, so now I'm going to show you how to make the graph update live with new data. So here in script, I'm going to have let data equal one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and then we're going to have six inputs. And I'm going to make them number inputs. And they're all going to bind their value to one of the data, one of the data items in data. Okay, so we got our data here. And we can just pass that data down. 
So whenever this one updates, it's going to update number four here. Okay, and then we're going to pass the data down, and we've got our data here. So first, I need to declare export let data, so that accepts this. So they all have the same name. That's why we can do this rather than doing like data equals data. So data gets passed down to here. This accepts data, and this then can be data. And to make it shorter, since they have the same name, it can just be like that. Okay, so now the data is being passed down. And you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So now it's bound, so you would think that it should live, um, you know, it should change. But um, it doesn't. So what we're going to need to do is rather than on mount, we're going to have to say after, that is, okay after update. Okay, and we're not going to need on mount actually. So whenever this component updates, it's going to run create chart. So um, after update, create chart. Okay, and so it's going to update whenever this data updates. So data will change, that'll update the chart, and then it'll say, oh okay, rerun this create chart. Okay, so now let's see, five. Okay, now it's five. And that's what we wanted. Seven. Oh, okay, so there's this weird thing that happens. You see when I hover, it goes to previous. It does something weird. Okay, the reason for that is we are not, that we need to destroy the chart from before. So I'm gonna pull this variable out, var my chart, um, rather than setting it here. And I'll actually pull this out too. This is always going to be the same. We don't need to rerun. We don't need to redeclare these every time this runs. So we have our CTX, our context, which is the canvas, and then we have my chart. Okay, so um, if my chart, so if it's already been set, then my chart dot, oh, why does it do that? Hmm. My chart dot destroy. Like that. Okay, what did I do? Cannot read property length of null. Um, if my chart, my chart dot destroy, my chart equals new. Um, sorry, this, okay, we gotta do this the same. So we're just gonna declare context there, but then we need to actually set it right here uh, for the same reason because this hasn't mounted yet so it has no way of getting it if it hasn't mounted yet okay so I save it okay now it's like this and if I up okay so it's doing like it did before and now when I hover over it it doesn't do that weird thing and you've got your chart so you can do this with different data um, you could do this with text analysis and um, people you could have someone put in different variables and then run some data and recreate the chart for them. So that's how you use felt with chart.js.